muted. So we could possibly be, be uh, answering. A couple of quick housekeeping items before we uh, get going. All of the participants are on mute during the, uh, the webinar to ensure that we have an excellent sound quality. In order to be able to engage with uh, Mary, or if you have any questions for us, you can use the questions feature in the GoToWebinar uh, uh, box that you, you have. And this particular box uh, on, on the right-hand side says question, and you just literally just type it in, hit the send button, and we'll see it. Now, some of the questions are going to be answered during the webinar, and those that are not answered will be uh, uh, answered in the Q&A session. We will be answering uh, questions as we move from um, each of the, uh, the, uh, the topic areas today, and then we'll have a final wrap-up for a uh, Q&A at the, uh, the end. Uh, a recording of the uh, webinar is uh, being uh, produced, and everyone who is uh, signed in for this event will receive a, a copy of it. Well, with that said, let's uh, jump right in. Um, I'm really excited to have Mary uh, Thompson having uh, taken time out of her incredibly uh, busy uh, schedule to, uh, to join us. One of my joys here, I'm Keith Person, and I'm the President and Chief Customer Advocate, but one of the things I love best about being here at Frank Connect is I have the opportunity to sit in on the, uh, the boardrooms and with the executive teams and actually watch also from within our system how franchise organizations are growing. And uh, uh, to, to borrow a phrase, many are called and few are chosen. Uh, Mary is one of those rare individuals that just operates at such a high level that uh, we see incredible, incredible success within her organization that has allowed her to uh, progress to ultimately being the, uh, the role of Chief Operating Officer of the Dwyer Group, one of the most successful multi-branded uh, service concepts uh, in, the, uh, in the world today. Well, with that said, I think that uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mary to uh, go ahead and uh, introduce herself and to uh, tee up the, uh, the topic for the day. So without further ado, uh, Mary Kennedy Thompson. Okay, Thanks, Mary. Keith. Sure. Thanks, Keith. I really appreciate the kind introduction and thought I would just take a minute and share a little bit about myself first uh, so you know who you're talking to and, uh, and, and who's sharing information with you. I, I started in franchising as a franchisee first. I was a franchisee in Cookies by Design back in the very early 90s uh, was a sales rep and was making lots of money but didn't like what I was doing and knew I wanted to manage my own destiny and control my own destiny and so I one day my husband came home with a wonderful little flyer and it said for franchising information and it was like magical words to me so I've sat on both sides of the fence I, I often believe that uh, understanding both sides of the fence helps keep a focus on understanding where your franchisees are and uh, after I was a franchisee, I was a multi-unit franchisee for a number of years. When I sold my businesses, the franchisor called me and said, would you come work for us? And initially I said, no, I don't think I can go work for the dark side. I joke about that, but really um, I did say that. And they said, please come, come talk to us and you can name your title. You can tell us what you want to do. And so my first title was shop facilitator. I loved the word facilitator because I wanted to facilitate and help others. And in the first year, I did 130 site visits out to our franchisees. And I probably learned more in that year than I had in all the years I'd been a franchisee because all of a sudden I had all, all these best practices in front of me that I was able to learn from and then take and leverage within our brand. And I basically did just about every job in the franchise headquarters for Cookies by Design until I was president of that company. And then about 11 years ago, uh, Mike Bidwell, who's the CEO of the Dwar Group, uh, he and I kept running into each other at IFA, and every Dwar Group person I ran into just had this special something about them. I, I couldn't put my finger on it. it. I now know that it tied to the code of values and that people that were very driven, values-driven, and, and wanted to work for something bigger uh, were drawn to this company. And he said, I've got this plumbing company that we've been looking for a president, and would you be interested? And I remember saying to him, but I don't know anything about plumbing. I know a lot about cookies and franchising, but nothing about plumbing. And he said to me some very wise words, uh, business is business. And really the business of business is the same from industry to industry. And so I made the best decision I've ever made and came over to the Dwar Group and started off as the president of Mr. Reuter Plumbing and uh, was the president for nine years. And about a year and a few months ago, I stepped into the role as Chief Operating Officer for the Dwyer Group. And as you can see below, um, we have a number of brands. We actually have 14 franchise brands and 16 brands total. Two of the other brands are consumer-facing, but they're not in the 
franchise space. And we focus on the repair, maintain, and enhance space of service franchising. So if you have a home or a small business that needs to be repaired or, or maintained uh, we, or enhanced, we do that. Uh, a little bit more that I thought you might want to know just for setting the context for today and what we're going to be sharing. Uh, let me just get the slide advanced. Tracy, if you would please go ahead and advance that slide, please. Uh, for us in franchising, what we have learned is that uh, there are different types of franchisees. And, and for us, we have some of our brands are more what we call trades brands, and some are more service brands. So some of our brands are more conversion franchises. So, so I know that some of you on this call, you're conversion franchisors, where you take somebody who's already in the business and you don't teach them the business, you teach them how to run the business. And so about, about half of our brands fall in that category. The other half we call our service brands, which are more business opportunity, somebody who's coming in as a maybe a corporate refugee or someone who's coming in that wants to control their own destiny and uh, has, uh, has money to invest in the business and wants to take it to the next level. Uh, we do work with a lot of tradesmen. Uh, that's part of our what we do in the conversion franchising. And for us, we have to understand there's many different stages of understanding. We might have somebody who's a conversion franchisee who knows next to nothing about technology. And then we might have somebody who comes in under a business opportunity in one of our other brands that is very technolo technologically savvy and also very business savvy, but they need to learn more about the in industry themselves. And so we've had to build our training programs uh, around those two different ways. And uh, for us, we know that when we're talking to our franchisees, we've got to meet them to where, where they are. We've got to spend some time with them and understand where are they on that path, because if you're talking to them at the wrong level, you're missing something. And today I'm just going to share some of the lessons learned and what we've, uh, what we've learned as we've been doing it, what I've learned as I've been doing it. And I'm going to start with, first and foremost, the most important thing that, um, that you've got to do as a company is to get your culture right. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And then if, if you could please advance the slide. Uh, I shared with you that we fall in the repair, maintain, and enhance space. And uh, we really uh, have 16 brands total and 14 that are franchise-based. And about, uh, we just, within the last couple of months, acquired Window Genie. That's our newest company. We're very excited to be working with them. They're based out of Cincinnati. And they will, uh, uh, they add another 100. So we're really at about 2,700 franchisees. And if you could go to the next slide, please. So first, You've got to help everyone in your organization. Well, you've got to make sure your organization knows who you are and that you have a set of values that you're going by. One of the, we have a thing here, we call it live rich, and rich stands for respect, integrity, customer focus, and my personal favorite one, which is having fun in the process. For a company to really draw the right kind of people to them, and for us to find the, not just the right employees within our headquarters, but the right franchisees uh, within our brands, we know that we need a set of values. It, it creates our identity. It gives us a roadmap for where we're going. It sets up expectations. Uh, one of our values is speaking calmly and respectfully without profanity or sarcasm. And we talk about that. And it sets an expectation for how our communications are going to go. And then it sets the example. Uh, when we first rolled out our operational code of values, a group of leaders that were rolling it out said, here are our 15 values that we're going to go by, and we're going to recite them, we're going to talk about them, we're going to put them front and center. If you catch us doing something wrong or breaking one of the values, you can beep us. Uh, I, I would say a couple times a year I get beeped on the speaking calmly and respectfully without profanity or sarcasm. But our statement is that we live our code of values by showing respect for all people, acting with integrity, with all dealing, serving customers with enthusiasm and having fun in the process. So now what I'd like to do, and if you could move to the next slide, I'd like to talk about the five areas that uh, over the last 25 years uh, I've learned to be focusing on on the operation side. And I saw a list of people who were attending this, and it looks like a lot of you are operators. In fact, the vast majority of you are, are operators. And um, what in for me, this comes from having been a franchisee and then 
moving up the ranks up to president and then realizing when I had multiple brands that there were some things that are the same from brand to brand to brand. And we'll talk about each one of these separately, but first we've got to know our business drivers. I'll talk to you more about what it means by not boiling the ocean. We need to know uh, the people that are in the field. You know, I always say there's three lines in your business, your top line, your bottom line, and your front line. And your front line determines uh, what happens to your top and bottom line. And I consider our franchise consultants or franchise business consultants, I think a lot of you call them FPCs, but we call them FCs or franchise consultants, that they need to know what to do and almost more importantly, what not to do. Because when uh, they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, they're not, they don't have time to do the things that they need to do. And then there's an approach for how we move on projects and change. We call it ready, fire, aim. And then lastly, uh, managing that change and how you communicate that. We, uh, we have grown more than 50% in the last couple of years, and we've had a lot of change to manage. And uh, I wake up every morning thinking I'm a good communicator. I go to bed every night reminded that I'm not a good communicator. And uh, it takes a lot uh, to get, when you're managing change, to get that information out. So first, for those that are in operations, you know, what are your four or five areas that drive your business? You know, for us, you know, we, we have 11 different franchise brands. We have 14 internationally, but I work with 11 of those brands in North America. And uh, one of the things I found was that uh, we all had different strategic goals. We were going in different directions. And uh, we started a process this year, uh, thanks to our CMSO, who uh, really had some keen insights for us of um, systematizing how we were going to strategize and making sure that we used, while the answers at the end were not all the same, because every brand, like every franchisee, like every person, has its own special needs and is different, um, each of those, um, the process for getting to that place needed to be the same. And uh, we needed to make sure we surrounded ourselves with the same resources around every brand. So um, we've got to know what our regular measurements are. And there are, you know, we talk about this regularly. We just had a, a session we call the leadership retreat where we all come together for about three days and we present what we're doing and we talk about what are those measurements that, that, that drive the most? What is the 20% of the work that creates 80% of the results? What should we be measuring? Because um, we could be measuring the wrong things or we could be measuring too much. Uh, our CIO told me the other day something that I'm going to remember that is, is really quite powerful. Data is, is worthless, but information is priceless. And what are we doing to make sure we have the right information in our hands and we're not drowning in data? And we need to make sure that our field teams, our franchise consultants, or our FBCs, that they know how to support and, and from what we're measuring, how to support towards that. And aligning you know, everything from where, for us, where the DWAR group is to where our companies are uh, to where our franchise consultants are to these goals. What are we trying to drive? Uh, where are we doing it? It's very easy. I, I have found it's very easy to overwhelm your franchise consultants with, I need you to do this, and now I need you to do that, and I, now I'm going to add this other part to it. And you know, our number one thing is we want them to grow their franchisees. We want them to spend time with their franchisees um, being an advisor, not just analyzing, but advising them on where they need to go. And while the process of supporting a franchisee is the same from franchisee to franchisee, how you go about it varies based on the need of that franchisee. So if you don't have these regular measurements, things like job average or, uh, or, or turns or uh, how quickly they can get to a customer or net promoter score, those type of things that let you know where your business is going in the book traction, uh, which uh, was recommended to me when I was at the CEO Growth Circle uh, about two months ago. It's a great read. Uh, we're going to have all our franchise consultants read it. it. The premise of that book says, if you're on a desert island or uh, you're someplace where the only thing you have is a set of reports to tell you how your business is doing, what key numbers, what key pieces of information do you need to know to know where your business is going? So with that, um, let's talk about not boiling the ocean. 
Well, well Mary, one quick question for you before you move to that next topic. <clears throat> um, it sounds like from what you just said, though, that the top four to five business drivers is somewhat situational on a franchise by franchisee and location to location basis. Did I get that correct? It is. Um, well, it is and it isn't. So first of all, there are certain key numbers. Let's just use uh, net promoter score and job average. You know, for everybody, we need to know what the job average is and what the net promoter score is. We need, because that tells us how they're doing in business and tells them how, tells us how they're doing with the customer and them as well. But what we're focused on, we might have five KPIs. For this franchisee, we may need to focus on net promoter score. They may have a great job average, but because they're not focusing on the customer, they're they're doing they have some wrong selling skills. They're uh, they're they're not paying attention to maintaining the customer relationship. So what we focus on, which KPIs may vary, and within our brands, we do have different KPIs we look at because they're not the same. And understanding that um, probably the one across, I can't imagine. Um, an industry where net promoter score is not important. And just for anyone who hasn't read The Ultimate Question by Fred Reichel, I would recommend it. Uh, the ultimate question is, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely are you to refer us to friends and family? And if they score you a 9 or a 10, they're a promoter customer. If they score you a 7 or 8, they're neutral, and they're really not saying anything about you. If they're scoring you 6 or below, then they're a detractor, and they're telling 10 of their closest friends what a miserable experience they had with you. And so I can't imagine a business that would not want to know that. But it, um, uh, but within our brands, we learned that you know we have to pay attention to what is driving the uh, the driving the uh, the business forward. And what are those numbers for your brand? And do your franchise consultants can they rattle them off the top of their head, or is it something that they have to go ask somebody for? And is it something that uh, if you have a vice president of operations working with your FBCs that is go going through those numbers franchisee by franchisee, understanding what they are? Does that answer your question, Keith? Well, it, it, it does. And one brief follow-up is uh, you mentioned about the uh, FBCs uh, should be able to rattle this from the top of their head. Are these um, four to five key business drivers something that are uh, published in writing? Uh, uh, as a success plan or as a, a focus plan for the franchisees as well as the uh, franchise business consultants? Well, for us, at this point, we've moved to a, a business intelligence portal that provides that information to us, so I would call that in writing. Um, I do like having, uh, when you sit down with a franchisee, uh, one of the things I like about uh, about field operations or performance-wise, depending on who's using it uh, within FranConnect, one of the things I like about it is it puts in writing the things that you expect and want, the KPIs that are important. And uh, each brand does have some differences on how they communicate it, um, but we all look at it in the same way through our business intelligence portal. And I, I'd be... Uh, if I said that it was easy or, or we have it down perfect, I wouldn't be telling you the truth because we're still a work in progress. Um, when I said you know drowning in data, it's very easy to have a lot of data and drown in it. Uh, it's much more difficult to hone down to those four or five things of information, those pieces of information that will tell you where your business is going. And it's been a it's been a uh, uh, it's taken us a lot of work to get there. And I would tell you, we still have we still have room to go. Well, thank you, Mary. Certainly. So, you know, once you know what your your four or five um, key drivers to your business, what is really making your business grow, and uh, you know, even one of the drivers is it, let's all say it is franchise development. Um, and we need our field people, our operations people, to know and understand how critically important bringing new franchisees into the system is because it keeps them, keeps our system fresh uh, and relevant. It makes sure that we bring new blood in. It allows us for franchisees that may be ready to sell to bring uh, new people in. Uh, we often see a large uptick when we have an existing franchisee that's been in the system for a while and uh, it sells to somebody new because they're new and excited and they're stepping into it. So when we talk about what drives the business, don't let your operations be too far removed from 
your uh, from your development as well because um, they you know they can sometimes bump heads like oh if they just brought in better people and then development says well if operations would just you know train them better you got to keep those two groups very close then uh, probably this lesson about not boiling the ocean I've learned in the last couple of years I I tend to uh, be a high control person and I sometimes get down into the details when I'm overly uh, wanting to control something and if you uh, boil the ocean um, too much uh, you try to make it too big you try to chew off something that's just more than what you can do you get nothing done so uh, we have really started a, we have a process here that we, we do it it's a, on a computer program and it's all our initiatives uh, we call it strategic acceleration of growth and EBITDA and each of the um, each of department heads each of our brands uh, we spend time putting our initiatives down into bite-sized pieces that are broken out by month by quarter by year so that we can start to understand uh, where we're going and we can measure and we have measurements in there to decide whether we should keep doing what we're doing because sometimes you might have an initiative that you've started and you just by sheer uh, habit you just are doing it because it's what you've been doing and you haven't stepped back for a moment to see is it creating the results you want it to create because I find it easier to say yes to things than to say no to things and so making sure that you don't boil the ocean is learning where to say no to things and where to measure the initiatives you do have in place, are they moving the needle? Are they worth it? Uh, in Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, he talks about, you know, what, what should you start doing, stop doing, and keep doing. And I truly believe what you should stop do doing is sometimes the most important thing. And um, the other thing you've got to remember is everything that you're trying to do, any change that you're trying to bring to your organization, the field is going to need a way, your FBCs, your operators, they're going to need a reliable system for teaching the system. You know, we're systems people. The reason that we're in franchising is because we believe systems can make a difference, and, and we believe it to the core of our being. It amazes me when I talk to other franchisors, and even within our own organization, that sometimes we forget to make a system for the system. So you've got to have a reliable way. That's one of the things I like about, um, about uh, field operations is that I can go into FranConnect and I can look at this list and I can see who is doing what. I have a system for the system. And you've got to make sure that you have a way to roll out the information out to your franchisees. So uh, start small, break it up into manageable chunks. If you don't have something, even if you're just doing it on an Excel spreadsheet, where you're writing out, this is what these are the three things we're going to do this year. This is how we're going to do them. This is why we're going to measure success, and we're going to monthly and quarterly and semi-annually and yearly look at it and see should we keep doing it. Um, you you have a hard time uh, getting all the things done that you'll need to get done. And part of when you're when you're rolling out a new project or when you're uh, deciding what you you're managing some change. I'm sure there's many of you who uh, might be managing change. And if you could go ahead and uh, move to the next slide, Keith, I'd appreciate it. Um, it's important as operators that we know uh, what the field needs to do and what the field needs not to do. And I alluded to it at the beginning of this, uh, of this session. But we, uh, we just recently, um, probably about four months ago, we did a very in-depth survey of our franchise consultants. We surveyed them through SurveyMonkey. We actually had somebody who uh, also interviewed them and met uh, key franchise consultants. And we had certain questions about how much, where do you spend your time doing your work? What work do you want to do more of or less of? Where do you have your levels of frustration? And we compared their answers to how the franchisees were performing to look for corollaries to understand um, what was driving the business and what wasn't driving the business. And I don't know if anybody on this call may have this issue, but sometimes you get stuck in the administrative things that have to get done. And, uh, or that you, it's easy to ask the franchise consultant to do it. Sometimes it's compliance issues. Sometimes it's, we've just got to get this franchisee signed up to come to a convention or a meeting or a session. Um, what's, 
what you got to be careful about is to understand are they spending their time moving the needle, having what we like to call meaningful conversations that move the needle, meaningful conversations that get the franchisee to take action. So I would recommend when you start looking at what your uh, FBCs do or not do, is take some of your top field consultants and involve them in the process and study them and see where do they spend their time. Do they spend more time on the financial section? And if they do, are those franchisees performing better? Do they spend more time, you know, if you've got somebody who's working with very new franchisees, making sure that that franchisee is set up to, uh, to make sales, to have the, the customers coming in as quickly as possible. And um, involve them in helping create what it looks like. Uh, we Each of our brands has a president and a vice president of operations, and our franchise consultants answer to the vice president of operations. And we have a very robust working group with our vice president of operations. We're, it's interesting here at the Dwar Group, we're like a little leadership factory, uh, an incubator for leadership. So we have all these groups that can work together and ask one another questions. And this working group has, um, of our VPs have been very, um, involved in creating good training and understanding what our field people should and should not do. So we created a franchise consultant university where there's about uh, 14 hours of online training that they can attend uh, about once a year. We bring them together for a very intense uh, day of training, um, both on uh, financial training and, and training on how to be a good franchise consultant and even doing uh, we've uh, borrowed some ideas from the IFA where uh, you you show a case study and have the franchise consultants talk about it and come together and talk about what they would do and then present that out. And um, part of understanding what your field consultants should or should not do is making sure that you're auditing your visit process. So, and it was really uh, Sean and Bella from uh, Nestle. She was fabulous. She um, helped us understand uh, some better ways to use uh, field operations or performance-wise that you can create a visit and then put certain areas of focus that you want to look at and understand what your outcomes are and put action items or tasks that the franchisee can do so that you can start tracking actually change and activity. And you'll notice at the bottom of the slide it says, what does oh crap mean? And I do happen to be a licensed plumber, so I always feel like I can use that word uh, crap. Um, but I'll tell you what it means. Uh, we have five areas that we focus on when we're going out to a site visit or for having the calls, the meaningful conversations that we have with our franchisees. And O stands for operations. How are they operating? They first have to, you know, are their trucks set up properly? Are they following the system the way they're supposed to? Are they, you know, doing the things that allow them to do the job? When I was at Cookies by Design, I used to say, can they make the cookies? So first, you got to make sure that operations is, is correct and, and have a certain set of questions that you look at to understand that they are, that you ask yourself and the franchisee asks themselves. Then there's the customer focus. So now I, I know how to serve the customer. Now, am I serving the customer? Am I answering the phones properly? Am I, in it? Am I um, going back and forth with the customer in the way that I should be? Am I following the system for the standards? What does my net promoter score look like? What is the customer saying about me? And then the next part is recruiting and retention. So if I'm not recruiting the right people to my team and bringing the right people, I'm going to have a big problem. So I want to make sure that the things, and, and for, I'm sure for some of you, what hold, what's holding your franchisees back is recruiting the right people. It's not an easy answer. It takes a lot of moving parts. Uh, you've got to make sure, uh, one of the things we learned is our franchisees told us it was their biggest problem, but they were spending the least amount of time and money on it. So, uh, so you've got to be checking those things, that activity that creates the, the result. And then the next one is advertising and marketing. And I, you know, I want to make sure that I've got all these other things set up before I'm sending them too many customers that they can burn through. Now, there's a delicate balance because um, good sales fix many things. So I do want good customers coming in, but I want to make sure that they're spending their money properly. I don't want them spending big marketing dollars to then turn away customers because they either don't have enough people or they don't have their operations right. And then the last part, the P, is profitability because a unit level economics is everything with the franchisee. 
and uh, we need to make sure that, you know, so can I make cookies? Can I sell cookies? And the last one is can I make money selling cookies? So what profitability is that franchisee doing and how are they doing it? And where is it that they could be better? Because um, if uh, I want my, my franchise consultants focused on the, the oh crap first and foremost before anything else because otherwise we're not going to be able to take our franchisee to the next level. Keith, if you go ahead and move to the next slide, please. Certainly. And, and so, Mary, uh, if, if I may ask just one really quick question here. You talked about these meaningful uh, conversations, and it's great to hear um, all of the investment you make in continuously improving your, uh, your franchise business consultants, but can you speak um, specifically to how you help your franchise business consultants have those difficult conversations? How do you train them on that specifically? That's a great question. I think some of it is finding the right person and bringing in somebody who is willing to have those difficult conversations. So I think it's a twofold. It's making sure you find someone who's a good profile match to being able to have that tough conversation. And the other one is uh, role playing and letting them listen to others. I can tell you some of the best things that I ever learned on what I wanted to say to somebody, I learned by listening to somebody else saying it. And so, uh, for instance, I remember uh, being with a president, one of our brand presidents when we were both presidents, and he was talking to a franchisee, and he said, you know, I'd like your permission to make you mad for a minute because I really need to have this conversation with you. And I, I would have never thought to say that, but it was very effective. So I think sometimes helping, um, giving them some tools, that some phrases and some ways to introduce the tough subjects, you know, like your permission to make you mad, you know, need to have a serious conversation with you today, help me understand what's happening here that's making you think this, so that you can have those tough conversations. And then having follow-up that you're the vice president of operations or the person who the FBC reports to, that they're talking about what kind of movement or change. If this is a franchisee who's been doing $100 a week, and they've been doing $100 a week for five years, I have a problem with that because they haven't changed or grown or moved, and I want to find with the franchise consultant what conversation is missing from that. And you know, one of the things that come to light to me recently listening uh, in a meeting that we were in recently was uh, sometimes you have to move the franchise consultants around a little bit. Uh, they might have been in a relationship with a franchisee for a very long time, and they've gotten uh, stayed in that relationship or comfortable, too comfortable. And sometimes bringing in somebody new helps that as well. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. I, I, uh, I particularly like the other uh, one that uh, you shared with me about uh, I'd like your permission to make you angry for a moment. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, you know, I will say what's interesting about that is I've never once had somebody say no to me. And I've, I've said that a number of times. And what it does is it allows me now to have that tough conversation with the person. and. Uh, um, you know, I just said to somebody else this morning, you can't be in franchising and have thin skin because you have to be able to know that sometimes doing the right thing is making somebody angry because you're telling them something they don't want to hear but they need to hear. So yeah. once you're doing that, uh, as you're maybe, you might be a young brand that's uh, got a lot of things to roll out or you might be a longstanding brand that really has to have some change. Um, we have both here. And uh, I've always liked the ready, fire, aim method of um, moving into projects. And I learned this from the Marine Corps um, from my days there is you ready yourself, you go ahead and do a couple of shots, you see where the shots hit, you adjust and, and re-aim, and then you, you ready yourself, you fire, and then you look again. And then you ready yourself, you fire, and you do again. So you test small and you test fast, and you, you gather feedback often. Uh, to look at what's not working and what is working. Uh, if you're waiting for it to be perfect, you'll never deploy. And uh, I like to kind of deploy at the 85% mark. Uh, you'll, you'll just be stuck and you'll never be able to do it. And if you can help your franchisees understand, you know, that not every program is going to be perfect coming out of the gate. Uh, it can't be because we've got to, um, we have to ready fire aim. And we need your help with this. And part of when we talk about the system, the system is the network of franchisees and how they work together. And you, franchisee, are as much a part of the system as we are. And we need your help and we have to work together. You know, um, uh, 
the three stages of, and there's actually seven, but the three I always talk about are the the glee, me, and we stage. You know, glee, I'm so happy I'm here. I love everything about this brand. You guys are perfect, and I can't stand it. The next one is me. Why are you making me do this? I can't believe this is happening to me. I don't think you're thinking about me. And then when they when they get to that we stage, that we work together, and part of that is helping them understand that, look, when we get to 85%, we have to move forward, especially when you're talking about software. Um, and that um, as you're doing that, are you looking at what is success and what KPIs you might need to do, uh, be looking at for that. And then identifying one or two things each month or each quarter that drives improvement. Uh, be continuously improving. The minute you think your system is done, that's when you should start be worried. Um, and it's been interesting here. Um, uh, that that strive for continuous improvement is it, you can never let up on it. You have to understand that change, uh, business dictates change. Change is a way of life. And the more that everyone in your organization, every associate, every franchisee understands that. And um, for me personally, the thing that I think about for me personally is, am I growing fast enough to keep up with how fast my company is growing? And what am I doing to do that? And part of Ready, Fire, Aim helps you do that because you can do it in little pieces. And then lastly, the last uh, key that I, I really like to pay attention to is managing the change and communicating often. You know, um, we, we always are looking here on how we can improve and where we can be better. And because of that, Sometimes we forget to communicate the successes because we're moving so fast. And to take a moment and share the successes both within your internal team and with your franchisees as well where things are successful is important and it gets missed. Uh, do you do a, a meeting, do you do employee awards where you once a year you gather together and you, you commend and, and, and catch people who have done things right and reward them for that? Do you communicate with your, you know, on your intranet to your franchisees those things that are successful that you've rolled out a program and you've got some early success on that? Do you, do you communicate that? Um, do you, uh, do you look for things like when you've been on a site visit and a franchisee has changed um, and and has improved? Do you catch those things and? and congratulate both the franchisee and the franchise consultant that's working with them on that. And that one's really hard to do. I'm not sure we do a perfect, I know we don't do a perfect job of it, but it's something that it, uh, when you can catch those things and, and catch them doing it right and find those actions, it becomes easier and easier for people to model it. And um, how are you following up and tracking progress? I talked to you about our, our way of doing um, initiatives where we have it's on a computer program. We look at it regularly. We monitor it. We look at it we, once a month. There's a set of eyes that are looking at it to understand have we, have we made movement? Have we done activity? Have we created results? And is this something we should still do? Or is this uh, an initiative that needs to be stopped? How do, how do you follow up and track that progress? And how do you follow up and track that progress with your franchisee? You know, do you have something like um, performance-wise or field operations that you can look at that and say, here are the things that the franchisee needs to do? And one of the things I always share, if, if, you have, if you're asking your franchise consultant to go to a franchisee and give them 50 things they need to do, they will do none of them. It should be in bite-sized chunks. Uh, our general rule is no more than three things. And when they get the three things done, then we'll do the next. Because if I have 50 things and I don't do any of them, it doesn't matter. I'd rather they have one thing that creates change and change toward improvement. And uh, also you should be regularly surveying your franchisees to understand do they feel supported. And I use the word feel purposefully because sometimes um, you may be supporting them but they don't feel it. And you have to have this conversation. Um, Bob Gappa in Management 2000 calls it the Unified Thinking Meeting. But have to have this conversation about uh, this is what the franchisor's responsibilities are and needs to do, and this is what the franchisee's responsibilities are and need to do. And let's make sure we are united and unified on this thinking. What do you need to do? And I know you think I should be doing this, but that's not what I should be doing. Let me share with you 
what really needs to happen uh, to to take for you to get to the next place, for our brand to get to the next place. And so, um, you know, checking and making sure that they are learning. Uh, we've rolled out an e-learning process that has testing that allows the franchisee to test and understand that they really did hold on to that information so that we can uh, see if we're making progress uh, is, is important. And I, uh, Keith, I'll, I'll open up the floor for some questions in just a minute. I, I would just um, close by saying to everybody that um, to me, we are here, our paychecks, when we used to get paychecks or pay stubs, our pay stubs would say thanks to our franchisees who make all things possible. What we are here to do is to help franchisees be the best version of who they can be, to uh, inspire, to push, to pull, to show, to sell, to explain, to advise, to analyze, so that we can take them to the place that they would not have taken themselves. And I would encourage everybody that, you know, sometimes you'll have a, a FC that might get frustrated and say, well, they should already know how to do that. Well, if they knew how to do that, they wouldn't have come to us in the first place. So I encourage everybody to find, help your FBC find a way that they can connect with the franchisee so they can help create change for them. And Keith, with that, I'll, I'll uh, leave open up the floor to questions that people may have. Well, well, thank you. Um, Mary, first of all, I want to say that that's terrific because I know so many times people want to just go specifically to, here's how you do this, and here's how you do that, and here's the KPIs, and, and all the specifics. And those are very good, but at the end of the day, one of the things that I really see across the system is there's people who have built franchise systems that are based on values, uh, they're based on strong systems and processes, and you and your organization are very uh, sy systemized and very process driven. Uh, but if you don't have that strong foundation in place, uh, it can all fall apart. And we see even within our own customers, there's those that struggle with getting engagement with their franchisees and even with their corporate staff, and and uh, find it difficult to accomplish. Uh, you know, accountability, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that these are very, very important. And some questions are starting to come in. I'd like to remind everybody that you can go ahead and ask your questions of Mary uh, by looking at the dashboard that's associated with your GoToMeeting uh, webinar, and you'll be able to uh, put those in so we can read them. So I would like to uh, start with uh, some of what's flowing in right now. Uh, Tracy, move back uh, a slide in the other direction. Yeah. Mary, you started talking about I'll go back one more, Tracy. You started talking about uh, the, uh, the the role of uh, court, uh, culture uh, and, and core values, et cetera. And um, I, I'd like to just uh, ask on behalf of somebody here in our audience, why is that so important? Why is that really the point of beginning? Well, it's the foundation to everything. I, I heard someone say once that it's really easy to make decisions when you know what the rules are. And you know, underneath this, there's 15 values, values like operating in a responsible manner above the line, uh, communicating honestly and with purpose, and, uh, making our best effort to understand and appreciate the customer's needs in every situation. Those are some examples of those values uh, here. When you know that, then you know, well, that's the rule, and I'm going to make a decision based on that, one. And number two, you start attracting people that also are, uh, these set of values resonate with them. I, I, I think I shared on the very beginning part of the call when uh, when I first started running in the Dwar group people and when I first started talking to Mike Bidwell, every one that I ran into had this special something and I couldn't put my finger on it and it was these set of values and so people who were like me were attracted to that company and um, and I think that it, it, it helps, it's, it tells you who you are and it helps you bring other people to you who are like you and who want to do business the way you want to do that. Uh, thank you. Now, you're acquiring other uh, brands, and you didn't necessarily have a say into who those franchisees were and whether they fit your specific culture. So I'm very uh, interested in knowing what do you do when you find a franchisee that is not in alignment with a culture uh, before you 
pull out the uh, the the last thing you want to pull out is that contract. So what do you yeah. do to bring them into the other uh, fold? Well, I've always said the minute you have to pull the contract out, you're already on the losing side of it. So you you have to start way before then. Well. First of all, we see it kind of as a marriage. Uh, the companies that we've been acquiring have a lot of similarities to us, and we look for successful companies that have a similar, uh, run, take care of their franchisees in a similar way that we do. And so some of that has has been very good. There's always going to be somebody who's going to say, I don't believe in this, or I don't, I don't get this, or like this. The first thing I think you have to do is listen and learn and, and find out what's behind it. Because sometimes it's something small, like, Somebody didn't return my call. You know, one of our code advisors is responding in a timely fashion. Five years ago, in three months, and two hours ago, somebody didn't return my call. So you guys really don't respond in a timely fashion. So first, listen and understand. There will be some people that aren't the right match. And I think it's OK to say, you're not happy, and we're not happy. Let's figure out how to get you in and uh, get you out. Um, there's a show, uh, Love It or Leave It, that uh, I I believe it's on HGTV, and one of the brand presidents was talking about that to, to us the other day. And it's really about love it or leave it. We need you to love it. We need you to be all in, or let us help you get all out. Because having people that are halfway in hurts them and hurts the brand. And so sometimes it's just because there's a misunderstanding. And sometimes it's because there is understanding, but no one's had the tough conversation. Yeah, oh, awesome. Uh, hey, Frank uh, Milner, uh, who I know, who's a CEO over at uh, Tudor Doctor, just asked a, a question regarding Ready, Fire, Aim. He'd like to know, once you've tested something, how do you manage rollouts effectively? Is there a system for this? And can you give some insights as to that process? Certainly. I would love to tell you that there's a perfect system or that we have a perfect system over here. We certainly do not. Um, but we do know a number of things. Uh, one is that uh, communication is key. So you have to have communication at many different levels. And uh, so first you have to make sure that everyone, all, all the leaders, fully understand and embrace it. And hopefully you've enrolled them through that, through the process anyway, so they're already part of the process. Then you make sure that you know, you've got to make sure the franchise consultants fully understand how to use the program or what the program's about or what it means and what benefits it's going to bring to the franchisee. Then you start to roll it out to the franchisees. And we do it with a series of emails, a series of webinars, uh, a series of in-person meetings, whether it's an annual meeting or maybe a regional meeting, um, and, and telling, taking all the way down. We've had a lot of software changes within our brands. And you have to get all the way to the level of, OK, you're sitting there behind your computer screen. Now let's, let's do this. But uh, I, I can tell you that. Um, when I first came into Mr. Reuter, uh, I did not, as a leader, get to know the software as well as I should have. And I struggled with creating change because I wasn't fully enrolled in it. So to me, first the leadership has to fully own and be enrolled in it. And then you, you, then you make sure your franchise consultants are going to be the ones that create the change. So you can't go around them. I've, I've seen on times, and I'm certain we've done that on times, where we, we start pushing it out to the field and pushing it out to our franchisees. And we don't take into account that we spend enough time with our FBCs or our franchise consultants, helping them understand how the program works. Uh, terrific. Um, Frank, hope we got your money's worth on that one. <laughs> uh, next, I've got a, a question that came in from uh, Lawson Sharp uh, from uh, Decorating Den. Hello, uh, Lawson. Lawson wanted to know, Mary, what ratio of uh, franchise business consultants to franchisees do you recommend? Uh, I don't know if I can say recommend. I'll tell you what we do and what we've learned. We are about 1 to 35. And I do think it it varies. It varies within our brands as well, but it varies. I've seen the restaurant uh, um, franchises maybe have a, a, a one to fifty mix, a little higher, because they usually will put somebody who's very regional and can get to the locations faster. Um, we uh, we don't do it that way. Um, it's a different way of coaching. It's uh, you're not looking at the food here and here in line you're looking at is how's your truck equipped and how are you training your technicians and the, in some of our brands there's a lot of licensure so we have found about 1 to 35 works for us um, I've heard I've seen some brands that do 1 to 30 I would say that 
if you're a younger brand and you have a lot of new franchisees that need a lot of um, hand-holding and work, you probably need to be at the lower range, and that's what we see. When you have a more um, established brand with more established franchisees, you can probably, you know, for us, we can get to the 1 to 35 to 1 to 37 range. Uh, excellent, and, and I'll take advantage of that by saying I put a slide up here. This question is going to be answered in detail with four of the uh, the real real uh, great executors in franchising. We've got in the uh, at the International Franchise Association on Monday, January 30th. We've got our own breakout session. I will moderate it, but Mary's going to be joining us, and this is where we really can peel the onion back and and look at specifically what they're doing, how they're doing it. So we've got Mary is there. Tom Gilday is president and chief operating officer for Bright Star Care. Meg Rose, VP of field operations from Firehouse Subs, and Sean and Bella, chief operating officer for Nestle Tollhouse Cafe, and uh, they're going to uh, help us answer uh, the franchise operations challenge. What are the specific best practices for helping your franchisees to significantly improve their performance? So I'm glad you asked, asked that uh, question. I also wanted to say really quick while I'm on this slide that uh, the next in this series is going to be another operations webinar uh, called uh, Implementing an Effective Field Operations Tool with Sean and Bella. So please make a note of February the 24th at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern. And Keith, I'd just like back. to say Sean and Bella helped us uh, as we were trying to roll out what we were doing uh, here at the DAR group. She was extremely helpful. I would listen to anything she had to say. Yeah, I'll second that, Mary. Uh, a question that came in from James Land is getting back to those uh, difficult conversations that FBCs have with their uh, franchisees. James would like to know, how do you end the conversation that you started with, may I have your permission to make you angry? That is, what do you say after you've completed the communications loop? Well, if you're having a tough conversation, that usually means that action needs to happen. So to me, there's a couple of things that have to happen. One is you've got to leave with a couple of action steps. And I've always found when you're having one of those tough conversations, the action steps usually need to be on both sides. I agree I'm going to do this and this, and you agree you're going to do that and that. And we're going to get them done by this time, and we're going to get back together by this date. And I, if, I, if I'm having a tough conversation on the phone, I either want resolution on that conversation or I want another meeting on the books. I don't want to just, I don't think it, you, you create the change you need when you have that tough conversation and then you just hang up the phone. Even if it's, let's follow back up in two months on this date, let's get it on our calendar now. We agree we're going to do these things and you said you're going to make this change and that change. Let's you and me follow up and make sure that that's what's happened. That's great. Thank you. Um, we have time just for uh, probably another uh, two questions. Uh, the first one that um, I'll read out here has to do uh, getting back to integrating franchisees. Now, you acquired franchisees. Some of our attendees have conversion programs where they're actually targeting independent uh, business owners to become franchisees. And uh, so um, I'll ask uh, about around this. What have you learned in terms of uh, integrating disparate brands and bringing in franchisees from uh, other systems that you didn't know before, Mary? Uh, listen, 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 and listen. I'll start with understand <laughs> what is special about that brand. Don't assume you know what it is. And get to know, uh, you know, there's a good, Stephen Covey wrote one of the best books I've ever read called The Speed of Trust. And uh, one of the things it says in the book is, if two parties can say two sentences to one another, you have the basis for building trust. I mean you no harm, and I seek your greatest good. And so when you, can, when you come in, if you can say those two things, and they can say it back to you, and you can start having conversation, that's how you learn how to integrate that brand into what you're doing. And there are things that we at the Dwyer Group do really well, and then there are things that we don't. And some of the brands we brought in, they did some things much better than we were doing them. And you have to be careful uh, to not come in and go, hey, we've got all the answers, because you know, sometimes you do. Sometimes you have a lot of good answers, but not always. Be careful not to, uh, to lose a really good something, because you're, you're slashing and burning. 
Yeah, you've got some rare uh, insights from uh, having done this uh, time and, and time again. Um, you just you mentioned two books on this conversation, so I just want to kind of reiterate these again. You said two books that you recommend, basically. Oh, well, the first one was Traction, and that's by Gino Wickman, correct? Yes, and uh, that's a great read, and I, I'm going to encourage our franchise consultants to read it because it really is geared towards the small business owner, and what I think understanding that just gives our franchise consultants uh, more knowledge. And, and I would like to uh, make a special offer to the people that attended today. If any one of you would like your own free hardbound copy of that booth, I want you to send me an email at keith at friendconnect.com. Uh, I know Gino Wickman very well. Um, I purchased a lot of uh, books from him uh, because I'm a big believer, as is uh, Mary. Uh, just send me an email, say, I, uh, I'd like a traction book, and then just come by and see us at booth number 351, and I'll have them there for you with a uh, card with your, uh, your name in it. The I did not book, even know that <laughs> when I recommended that. I did not even know that. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Mary, uh, feel free to, uh, you, you know, you, you've done us a great favor here today. Uh, I've got a few extra copies for you if you'd like <laughs> for your franchisees. Thank you. See, you're already getting ROI from this call. <laughs> the, uh, the other book you mentioned was um, uh, Speed of Trust, by, uh, and that was Stephen Covey, correct? Correct. Excellent. Those both sound like uh, great, uh, great reads. So we're at 2.59 uh, Eastern. Mary, first and foremost, I want to thank you so much for your willingness to take uh, time out of uh, your incredibly demanding role to uh, help pay it forward. And I know that that's why you've uh, uh, agreed to do this, that you're, you're very much you know, appreciative of everything that you've received in life, and I know you're committed to just helping make uh, franchising the world a better place. So thank you, Mary, for, for doing that. You're most welcome. Uh, and I want to thank uh, all of our attendees who took time out of their time to, uh, to join us as well. I'm, I'm sure and, and uh, pray that you, you got uh, value that you can put into action today in your uh, business. And uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, either in uh, Dallas at the uh, IFE Expo if you happen to be there this week, or to see you in uh, Las Vegas at the uh, IFA convention. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. You will be receiving a uh, copy of today's uh, audio from the uh, session. Bye, everybody. Bye.